Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Well, it's been a while and uh, we're back and we've got a lot of time to make up. So, we shall start with this new addition to the layout. It's a LNER A5-1 X Great Central Railway um, passenger tank locomotive. Um, it's made by Sonic Models, uh, distributed through Rails of Sheffield. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm adding some crew to the cab. Um, it's very interesting to see what Sonic have done here, um, letting you have access to the cab uh, without too much great difficulty. Um, you've got to be very aware of these little gauges that are fitted to the top of this pipework when removing the cab. But it's fairly straightforward. The cab is held on with a screw and a nylon washer. And uh, there's the, the threaded socket there. So we've got plenty of space in there to put the locomotive crew. Um, what can I say about this locomotive? It's superbly detailed. Um, I've not come across this manufacturer before. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how she runs. And um, we shall see that later on in the video. So, before we get stuck in to what this video is mainly about, and that's um, scratch building and kit bashing. Um, but before we do that, I just want to give a massive shout out to Paul and Parish from Smallwood Junction. I met them a couple of years ago at the Getz Model Railway Exhibition in 2021, and. Um, and it was it was it was good to meet fellow railway enthusiasts, and uh, now they have decided to put their work on YouTube, um, which is great to see. I love to see people who have inspired in a little tiny way to have a go and get their. Um, layouts on YouTube. So that is Paul and Parish of Smallwood Junction. Um, yeah, so pop along and say hello. Well worth a look. Uh, in the meantime, I shall carry on putting the crew into this loco and um, we shall see this running later on. So there we are, we have the crew fitted, and I'm just putting the cab back on. Um, it lines up with this edge here. So I've got to be very careful in putting it back. Make sure it lines up where it's supposed to, and the screw goes back where it's supposed to. Just waiting for that little click, it just, should just click back in. There you go, that's clicked. Right, and now we'll just put the screw back in. And that's as easy as that. Now, you don't want to do the screw up too tight, just in case you crack the carbon washer that's under there. So it's just a little nip. And then we'll just drop the coal load back in. Now with these being new, the coal load was a little bit tricky to get out, so it was a nice snug fit. But, uh, there you go. That's in. So, that now is ready to run on the layout.
right, so let's talk about the subject matter of this video, which is scratch building and kit bashing. And um, let's see if we can um, separate the two. But sometimes the two come together, as you will see as we um, progress with this video. So, on one hand, we have kit bashing. Well, kit bashing is exactly what it says on the tin. We buy a, uh, a laser cut kit or a Medcalf kit or anything like that, street scenes, or anything like that, and then we modify it to suit the area where we're going to place it on the layout. And, and it works to a T. And uh, I've seen lots of people have done this, and yeah, it does work. And uh, they do look good. On the other hand, we have a scratch building. Now, scratch building is, is a totally different ball game where we, we see a building, we like it, we take a picture of it, then we do our research behind it, and then we look at the area where it's going to go, and then we build it to suit that area. So, that is scratch building, building something totally unique um, for your layout. So, what we'll do, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the buildings that I have done and I'll do a little bit of an explanation of, of what I've done to them buildings to get them where they are and how they look. So, come on, follow me. Here we are over at Newcastle City Centre. And the reason why we're here is we've all got to start somewhere when it comes to making buildings. So we prefer to use kits. Now these are the Medcalf kits. And um, I've hardly done anything with them except add LED lights. Because these kits come with the detail already inside the shop windows. So all you got to do is just glue them together. Now you can, if you wanted to, you can kit bash these low relief buildings, which I have done, and we'll we'll see that later on in the video. So yeah, card kits are a great way to gain experience on how to make buildings. So let's have a look at some of the kit bashing I have done. Let's move on to kit bashing. So here we have the Medcalf Church. Now I've seen this on many layouts but uh, with this one what I've done here is I've moved the door. The door would have been on this side. So what I've done is I cut a patch of card same shape as a window and filled it in and then I moved the door round to what I call now the front of the church and it just gives it that much more to look at um, rather than just having another window there so uh, that was uh, one of the kit bashes uh, another kit bash was the set of shops over there which became the railway inn and um, that was straightforward yet again to do um, quite, yeah, what I did there is I followed instructions, left the front off and then cut away the centre walls and built the bar to go around the centre walls. So it looks like uh, there's two bars in there. But yeah, uh, yeah, and then I just uh, glued the shop fronts together you can probably make out there's a long length of card that runs along the uh, lower part of the building which keeps all the windows together and then the sign across the top uh, just makes it more like a pub but it just looks like the pub was converted from two shops anyway so that was another kit bash and of course um, this is where I put in the first ever curved platforms. Um, 
So I just follow that round. And uh, that was a, or is, a curved platform. I remember drawing uh, the track out on a piece of paper, sliding the paper underneath the track. I did it totally different to what I did with South Shields, and drew it, cut the, uh, the circle out, drew it out onto the MDF, and then just cut it down the middle, and then formed the two platforms with one cut, if you get what I mean. And here we have the super quick um, station kit. Um, I think what I did there, all I did there was cut away the bottom um, around the back of the building to get the 18 mil um, to reach the platform. And if we turn, if I can get the camera right round, we can have a closer look at what I had done to this station building and uh, that's the other part of the super quick kit um, station over there that, on that platform too so if we just come round you can see where there would have been windows there but I've got rid of the windows and created a canopy so yeah that was another kit bash and it is worth doing that to get the buildings exactly how you want them to look and then to finish it off i added some brick sheet and uh, this little building on the side that was scratch built as per the photograph of the high shield station so yeah, so that's uh, my view on kit bashing and uh, the rest of it is just um, kits and buildings pre-made uh, so yeah. And here is the first ever scratch build. Now it's, is it called, would it be called a scratch build? Um, because there's a lot of Medcalf parts there. Uh, the bay windows for instance and the front door. Um, it's all leftover Medcalf bits. But the building itself was purposely made to fit in that space. Um, I think what I did was I made a cardboard template of the base to see what size building um, I could get in there and uh, that is what we came up with in the end and uh, a little bit of decoration inside I painted the walls, I remember painting the walls but I didn't put any furniture in there or anything like that I think I put a couple of fireplaces in there uh, but nothing like that, so it was later on I got a little bit eccentric, I think. <laughs> but yeah, so these are just uh, bog standard Medcalf kits. Um, the little bit of um, modification there was just to make that fit the baseboard, really. So yeah, so that's kit bashing, I think. But you can marry up the two, kit bashing and scratch building, as you'll see. And this is a good example of kit bashing and scratch building. Um, this pit. Um, I bought this piece and the actual um, pit head, as it were, um, as a, uh, off eBay as a as a pre-made piece. And I think what I did was I added this little building here, or I adapted it, and I put in some stairs down here. And I, I remember taking, uh, yeah, I took the roof off. <laughs> God, I can't remember what I did on my own videos. Um, 
took the roof off and I added detail inside for the ditch dispatch area for the, the coal and that and uh, and this was all scratch build this building here on the side uh, which marries up quite well yet again I made a cardboard template to see what I could fit in that space and uh, yeah and I remember cutting this tube uh, 10 mil to nothing off there so we've got a slight taper you, you can barely see it but there is a slight taper on that tube and that kind of um, well it looks quite authentic as a as a colliery obviously it's not like St Hilda's was if you google St Hilda's it was a massive square building but that's just a a representation of a colliery and I think it works and for me this is what scratch building is all about um, I had some photographs of this bridge and well it took a while to figure out sizes and and whatever you, and uh, I counted the, the spans uh, which goes up to the arch and um, divided it with the space between the two buttresses and this is what we end up with this is a riverside bridge and uh, this was one of the most unique bridges that I may have made from scratch and I haven't made another one since to be honest and um, yeah it's funny because um, Charlie McGowan, after watching me build mine, he built one more or less in the same style. So, <laughs> scratch building in the, in our community seems to be a rubbing off of each other, which which is good. It's it's good to hear. But uh, yeah, this is uh, very unique to this layout, and um, it is sited where it is in real life. So that's one of the scratch building bridges. Now I have made many bridges, but uh, nothing like this one. And uh, for me, this is where I really got into the art of scratch building. This um, centerpiece of the layout, South Shields, as, as you all know, um, hundreds of photographs that I had found and given, um, and 18 months worth of work. piece by piece, room by room, and uh, yeah, this was <laughs> fun, it was a bit, a bit of a headache to work out what to do with the over roof, and um, the one mil welding rods and the 0 0.8 welding rods really does show up quite well so the reason why we're doing this type of video is because we have got a a newish camcorder because my old camcorder has packed up and I thought I'd uh, test it out and I think it's a lot better than the old one the pictures are sharper from what I can see from here So yeah, this uh, this is uh, one of the biggest scratch builds I've ever done, and uh, I don't think I'll uh, ever emulate it unless I do something like this for New Hustle. Maybe not the same design, but um, yeah, something along those lines. 
yeah as for scratch building I would highly recommend you having a go I mean if you've built and kit bashed many of the Matt Metcalf um, kits um, then by this stage you'd know how buildings go together and um, in photographs like this well gave me the inspiration to, to have a go um, because I've gone from that to just flip the drawing over to that so I worked it all out and I, and I used the, the car because the car was the only thing I could use to get these sizes uh, in order to make what became Mrs. T's sweet shop and uh, there it is the little sweet shop and the little bubblegum machine outside and yeah so uh, the social station as I said before I had I think I had about a hundred photographs in the end some of them were kindly donated um, and which without them there's, there's lots of details I would have missed um, but yeah I did struggle with the dimensions at some point um, but I managed to count the bricks for bricks in between the windows there to get that um, part of the building and more or less did the same here the the only trouble I had was doing something about the height of the platform and um, as you can see uh, we all know that uh, Social's building, building did not have those steps but that was my answer to getting Joe Public from the ground floor up to the platform so yeah I would definitely recommend you having a go plenty of photographs if you can, if you can count and measure the bricks brilliant but um, oh and it's all down to the space as well if you've got the plenty of room to do it so I think we've covered kit bashing and scratch building and um, and I hope you've enjoyed this little insight to more or less my world now because it's not about um, well running trains as it were I'm, I'm guessing most of you know that because uh, it's mostly about well what can I get away with how can I build that if I see a building can I make it that sort of thing but yeah anyway I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen uh, like I said this was just a, a test video for the new camera and I think the pictures are quite sharper and better than my old Sony um, camcorder. And that brings us on to Jarrah Road where we are today. And uh, it's more or less as we left it um, from the last video. So next week it's business as usual. But if you want to have a go at kit bashing, or maybe if you want to try your hand at scratch building, give it a go. You'll be surprised what you can achieve. Thanks for watching now. Bye.